Are we saying hello, baby? Are we saying hello, baby? When you are in your mama belly. Ah, oh, Grammy, please stop. Making me blush. You're very cute, too. Don't worry about it. You have no problem being cute. You're very, very cute. Yes, you're very, very cute. Hey friends and welcome back to the Heavenly Homestead. Today I wanted to do a video sharing with you, well not that I wanted to, but I'm going to share with you some sad news, bad news, and it's something that when I open the door to the barn this morning, this is what I found. So I'm trying to keep the goats out so I can examine him but uh, all I'm gonna say is I'm not surprised and I'll explain it all started about three weeks ago when I noticed that Grayson which by the way if I didn't mention this Grayson is a Athene's boy and they were born Grayson and Dylan that's how I <laughs> call them Dylan is the brown one with cute little markings in his face or on his face and Grayson was the gray buckling. Uh, they are twins. Athena has been doing such a great job with them. They've always been very jumpy, very happy, running around and you know they have that little face where they just don't want to be touched. They want to be running around and having fun and hiding under the goat house and scaring other goats and they were very you know very active and very very healthy Athene has been able to feed both of them despite the fact that I don't think her udder is as big as I thought it would be even with twins but that's beside the point they've been growing they've been doing great but then about three weeks ago I noticed that Grayson started to act different. He didn't want to run around that much. He didn't want to, um, I don't know, just be as active as he used to be. And this was something that I started to see as the days went by. He didn't look lethargic. He was still nursing. He was still eating his pellets. He was still eating hay. He just looked off. And compared to his normal or what I thought it was normal behavior I knew that something was kind of brewing in the background so the next day after you know a few days keeping an eye on him I decided to do a fecal and when I came to the barn I found that he was already scouring now I am not gonna claim that I know you know how to tell when your goat has coccidiosis but in my experience if the diarrhea it's dark and smelly they have coccidiosis if it's green and just smells of regular poo which doesn't smell you know anything unusual and if you keep goats you know what it smells like um, then it's probably something that you change in their diet that's that's how I see things but I still sent it in I sent his I sent uh, Dylan's and I sent Mocha's little boy uh, to to have a fecal done. I was treating Mocha's little boy or I did treat him a while back and I wanted to make sure that he was doing better. When it came back it was showing that Dylan and Grayson were both I mean, they both had coccidiosis, but Dylan was not as terrible as Grayson's was. And I knew that I had to treat them immediately. So I got the medicine and uh, I had a small bottle. I had to order a new one. Um, I still treated Grayson, which was the one that was not doing great. Then I treated uh, Dylan and Dylan immediately jump back to health. He was very healthy, he was very happy, he was very, um, you know, never, actually never stopped eating, never stopped pursuing his mom. He was very into, um, you know, eating and being his normal self that I knew since he was born. 
but Grayson wasn't. Uh, he started, even after he was treated, he started going to the front of their pen where the patio is. I, I think he was feeling cold, so he would sit in the sun, even when there was like 80 plus degrees, he was sitting in the sun, in the hot patio, because it gets hot. And you know how goats are. If one is in the front, everyone will go there. If one is in the back, everyone will move to the back. Well, nobody was following him because it was hot there. Um, so the goats were back in the back um, area, um, sitting in the shade, and he was just there by himself. Uh, fast forward to yesterday when it would have been the 10th day when I had to dose him again if I wasn't seeing that much improvement and when I went to feed in the morning yesterday morning that's when I'm talking that this happened I I saw him so he was standing in the patio area and he didn't look good uh, he he was crying but it was like those like very soft cries and almost like he had no energy and I've seen that before on sick baby goats and so I checked his temperature he was okay he wasn't scouring anymore I gave him some electrolytes and um, vitamin B probiotics and I thought today's the day that I need to dose him again so that's what I'm gonna do so I did it again and he uh, he just wasn't acting right and I remember when I left the pen and I said I'm sorry and I said it out loud I don't think you're gonna make it and I wasn't trying to like predict the future or I wasn't trying to get that to become a reality but I knew that unfortunately when they are at that point it's up to them and at the point that I saw him I felt like he was giving up and um, that's what makes a difference I've had Mocha's boy struggle and you guys remember this and if you don't I have a, a link I'll put on the top of the screen he's been struggling for months and you know I'm the kind of person that doesn't give up on a goat I know he's not going to be a breeding back, a buck, so he's not going to be spreading his little things everywhere. He's just going to be a pet and will live his life eating, you know, trees and grass and just, he's going to have a different life. So that's why I try to fight for their lives, even if they're just going to go as pets. And, you know, it's just part of... It's just part of who I am. I cannot give up on them. Um, and so, but by now, I kind of know the signs of when they're giving up. And, um, you know, that night I fed them. I kept an eye on him. I, I sat in the pen. He seemed a little bit better from that morning. But I put them all in. And this is another thing that I've been doing is if one of them is sick i will leave them with mom i won't separate to milk mom so athene has been with her boys um every night and every day so she's been feeding them 24 hours a day and uh, that's what i know it's good for them to continue to nurse because the calories from the milk are way easier to get compared to the energy that they need to feed themselves when they're feeding or when they're feeling sick. So I put them there and the next morning when I came I found him like I showed you before. So I unfortunately I'm gonna say this and it's gonna sound really bad but I'm not surprised. Uh, I was hoping that that wasn't gonna be the case. I wasn't expecting it, I but I was scared uh, every morning for the last two or three days to open the door and find him, you know, very, very sick or dead. So, you know, coccidiosis is very relative. 
and it's gonna work differently on different baby goats on different immune systems like I said his brother was probably just beginning the process so he jumped right back he is healthy he's happy he is a little it's a little devil he runs around he just he wants me to chase him he is super active and happy uh, Mocha's boy he it took him a while but he responded to the treatment and the treatment is um, Baycox. I was trying to think of the word. I was thinking of another medicine. Um, Baycox, you treat them, you give them one ml per five pounds. So depending on their weight is how many you have to give them. It's been proven to be very effective, but not in this case. So I guess what I want to say in this video is not only share those news with you, but also um, have you think about that the state that these animals are in, as far as their immune system will have everything to do with the outcome no matter how hard you try to keep them alive um, I think that at this point I kind of try to desensitize myself when one of the baby goats gets sick because it's really hard to lose them but I try to, um, I try not to put all my hopes and dreams in saving that little goat because sometimes, no matter how much you try, how, how hard you try, they will die because it's up to them. It's up to their immune system, it's up to their weight, it's up to their health, it's up to how much they're insisting on nursing. It's it's just one of those things that you have to understand that there's only so much that you can do. And um, I think this time, despite uh, being extremely sad that he passed and, you know, he was already sold, so I had to give the news to the person that... Um, was coming for him you know at the time of winning i just feel like i knew it was coming now as far as cleanliness and as far as not spreading this disease with every single baby goat um i've had 15 baby goats at the same time and the only one that got coccidiosis at the time was mocha's boy um, I've done several fecals on different baby goats when I felt like they were not acting right and they all came back normal, no coccidia. So I don't think it's so much about, you know, having coccidia in your barn as much as it is the personal or the goat's immune system at the time and how much it can take. And how can we improve uh, an immune system of a goat? Well, you tell me. I mean, the only way I know how to keep them healthy is feeding them the best hay I can afford, um, the best uh, pellets I can afford, you know, the best nutrition that I can afford for them, uh, having them in a clean barn. Um, I just don't know what else I could have done to prevent this and I think it's a testimony really of how the sickness can be there and I have something in my forehead the, or the illness can be there but it's actually picking and choosing who is going to be the one that it's going to actually get it and in this case we're those boys and one of them just was not strong enough to fight and survive it so anyways it's extremely sad and it's extremely disappointing uh and you know just i just have the hardest time you know dealing with our bodies when they're dead i feel extremely responsible for it but i know that if i dig deep i know i've tried my best and i cannot do more than that at this point i think that we we have tried everything to keep them as healthy as possible uh, we've sold many kids um, that they're thriving and doing amazing and so i just 
you know, we can't say that there is an actual problem unless the problem is affecting most of our herd. Um, yeah, it's, it's just affecting uh, specifically those two at the time. And now it was only him. Anyways, I wanted to share all this with you because I think it's important to share like the good as as the bad. I feel like this year it's been a really hard year uh, and I keep questioning myself different things that I really don't want to get into but it's been a, a tough year and you know I've considered <coughs> maybe I need a bigger barn maybe I need to sell more animals Maybe I need to do this, but then when I put it down in numbers, when I put it down and I write the names of the one that struggle, I realize that it's it's really not that many of them. It's just a couple of them that struggle and that in the end, um, unfortunately, that's part of life. Um, and that's what I'm starting to see, that part of life that maybe wasn't as... Uh, noticeable when I was having a little herd of three goats you know it was it was a completely different story so